Hello and welcome to Noel's Retro Lab, another quick fix episode. Today we have an Amstrad CPC 6128, which was unfortunately overloaded with the 12 volt power supply for the disk drive connected to the 5 volt connector. So bad things happened. Let's look at it, how to fix it really quickly and how to prevent that from ever happening again. Since this is a quick fix episode, let's try to fix the board in five minutes starting now. Here's the board, everything looks good. Looks fine in the bottom too. So first thing we're gonna do is power it up. And in order to do that, we need to put a jumper where the switch normally goes. Bench power supply set to five volts and 1.2 amps because a healthy Amstrad should never go over that. And I'm gonna turn the over current protection and I guess over voltage one. And let's see what happens. Okay, the current draw seems to be about right. So I don't expect any major shorts. That's a little low. Things usually closer to an amp, but if the board is not really working, that's more or less to be expected. So that's good so far. Okay, let's power it on and see what kind of video output we get, if any. Okay, that's, that's not a horrible sign. That probably means that the Z8 is working because it initialized the CRTC and it has the familiar shape with the borders and everything. And probably the gate array is also working, although maybe, maybe not. So I'm suspecting it's a RAM problem right now, which is also consistent with the over voltage that the board went through. If it's just a RAM problem, we should be able to identify it with the diagnostics ROM in there. Need to hold this. And yeah, so it looks like everything is working, the gate array, the Z80, and it's just that we have a lot of RAM ICs that are faulty. So that's three of them there and two of them there. So yeah, five out of those. And that's just in the lower bank. I don't know how many are faulty in the upper banks. This column is the lower bank and this is D0 and this is D7. So the ones that are marked as failing, the first one is good, this one is bad, these two are bad, those two are good, and then those three are supposedly bad. They came out pretty easily, so now time to put sockets and some new RAM ICs. Okay, new ROMs are in place. Let's try the test again. Perfect. It seems that all the RAM is working now, at least that bank. Now let's try it without the dandinator, just trying to boot up the Amstrad by itself. And that's great. <laughs> so it was just those five RAM ICs. To try the second bank, I'm going to remove the hell and put this adapter in place. And this, as it stands right now, it forces it to use the second RAM bank as the default bank. So when we run the test, it will actually run on the second bank instead of the first bank. So let's try it. And yeah, the second bank also has problems. This time it looks like it's the four least significant bits. So let's mark those chips as bad and off with their heads. I just removed the faulty ICs and I'm gonna put four new ones. Once again, holding the test button. Oh, interesting. This one is still faulty. I wonder if the IC is bad or maybe I accidentally broke a track or something. I need to check that one. So that is the second one from the top. That is this one. I'm just going to take it out and put it back in in case it wasn't set correctly. Yeah, it's definitely not good. Let's put a new IC. Okay, so even though this was a replacement one, this one was also faulty. And now, without this, and with the original hell, perfect. So this is still not enough, this is just the beginning. Now I would check to make sure that the 
disk controller is working correctly. I would check that the AY chip is working correctly. The joysticks and keyboard are working correctly, but this is the most important thing. It's back to live and I just wanted to demonstrate how to quickly fix the problems caused by over voltage. 442, that wasn't too bad. I might have cheated a little bit with skipping a few steps and speeding up a few others, but hey, you get the gist of it, right? Why did this over voltage happen in the first place? It's not like with the Commodore 64 that when the power supply starts to fail, the 5 volt line starts increasing voltage until it damages the computer. The Amstrad CPC 6128 has two power connectors. One which is a 5 volt connector for the main board and a 12 volt connector for the floppy disk drive. If you think this seems like a recipe for disaster, you could be right, except that Amstrad thought about this and put two very different connectors. The 5 volt connector is a female DC jack and the 12 volt connector is a male DC jack. Unfortunately, with some modern power supply replacements, it's pretty easy to get the two mixed up. So it's unfortunately not that uncommon to feed 12 volts into the main Amstrad board. Let's do a quick trick to prevent this kind of damage from happening again. We're going to use one of these diodes to prevent any kind of over voltage to the Amstrad board. These are called P6KE and they're specifically designed for that. Diodes normally let the current flow in this direction and current only starts flowing in the other direction after a certain point. And for these particular diodes, it's 6.8 volts, which is usually just about good enough to prevent any major damage happening to the board. So we're actually going to set up an example circuit right here and we're going to measure it both ways. So I've set up this extremely simple circuit. It's just a 10K resistor and here we have VCC and ground. So first I'm going to apply 5 volts and only 0.4 amps just to have a safe maximum. And when I turn that on, we don't even see any current draw pretty much because there's a lot of resistance. But yeah, if I check this, voltage across the resistor is pretty much 5 volts, exactly what we expect. So now imagine that we accidentally plug in a 12 volt power supply and what will happen to our poor Amstrad? Well, it will get cooked with 12 volts. There we go. So to prevent this from happening, we're going to install this diode and we're going to put it backwards. So with the negative end at the 5 volt at VCC, that way, in the normal circumstances, nothing happens. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't conduct current this way. But whenever this exceeds 6.8 volts, then this starts conducting. And so it should limit the overall voltage across our Amstrad, so this resistor, to about 6.8 volts. Now, it's not going to last a long time. I imagine this will start heating up and uh, eventually will destroy. So I'm going to try to measure it quickly. So I'm going to be using those probes instead just to try to capture the voltage quickly without you know, spending too long. I don't know how long this is going to last. So I'm going to turn it on and 7 volts. 7 volts is even all it's getting through. So I'm going to stop it right now. Did this get hot? It actually, yeah, actually it did get a little hot. But as you saw, it made it so no more than 7 volts were going through the resistor, i.e. our Amstrad. So it was safer than you know, a full 12 volts. I think a lot of those components will be able to deal with about 7 volts. This is going to be our solution to prevent that over voltage from ever happening again. So where exactly are we going to put the diode? We need to find somewhere that is between 5 volts and ground and hopefully a place that has um, eyelets or vias like that. And I was just looking with a multimeter and it seems like a good place would be 5 volts in there and then ground is there. So it would fit right like that. Oh yeah, and I also wanted to make sure that it was after the switch. So, um, so it only kicks in once you turn on the Amstrad for real. I'm also going to leave it not touching the board, so kind of hovering like that. Just because it's going to get hot if that ever happens. That should prevent this disaster from happening again. There you go. The Amstrad is fully repaired. I checked it over, by the way, in case you're curious, and all the other chips were fine. So really, it was only the RAMs that blew up with the over voltage. And that shouldn't happen anymore because we have that protection diode in place. 
I hope you enjoyed the episode. If so, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Until next video, see you then. If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting Noel's Retro Lab on Patreon or joining the membership on YouTube. Not only is that the best way to support this channel and allow me to continue making more videos, but you also get some extra perks like early access, ad-free videos, and more. Thank you again to all the supporters. See you next time.